Hi there, this video is a whistle stop tour of the NBN Atlas and three ways in which you can use it to look at biological records that may be of interest to you. So if we look at the NBN Atlas homepage here, which is nbnatlas.org, uh, we have a main menu bar at the top here, and I'm just going to take you through three of, three of the possible ways of searching for records here. So first of all, if you click on the species tab, it brings up the search for taxa page. So search for taxa just means search for uh, species or family or something like that. So we're going to look up in this example, the willow emerald damsel fly. And when we click on that and search, it should bring up all the records for the, that the Atlas has for the willow emerald damsel fly. So if we scroll down a little bit, here we see a map that has all of the records mapped out. On the legend here, we can see which records are confirmed and unconfirmed. Um, we can zoom into this map to look at it in more detail, uh, finer detail, and we can um, yeah, have a good play around with that, basically. Now, there are lots of things that we can use to delve into the data here, and we don't have time to go through all of them. So the one thing I just want to show you is the records tab here. So if we come on here, we get a nice graph showing us whereabouts all the records are. But if we click on view list of all occurrence records for this taxa, um, it will bring up the 4,354 individual records that we have. And we can scroll down to go through them. We can alter here so that we can see more on one page as well. Um, what we'll see here is that the first few are from um, a data set called All Taxa Records for Leicestershire and Rutland. And then we've got a wealth of data from the British Dragonfly Society uh, down there. So if we want to have a look at any of these individual records, we can click on view record and it will bring up the original record and all of the details for it. Okay, so moving along, the second way of searching for data that I want to show you today is locations. And if we click on the locations tab and then explore by address, postcode or location, we can then search for records within a given area. So let's say, for example, we wanted to look in um, the postcode for Harrow, which is where I live, which is HA1. Uh, that will then start bringing up all the records for that area. Now, it does take a little while to load because there's a lot of data being loaded here. And down the left-hand side, you'll see the um, main group. So we've got all species here, and then it divides them up into animals, further divides them into amphibians, arthropods, etc. cetera. Um, down here, you've got all of the individual species, and we can see how many records there are for each one here. We can click on these to delve into that further. And then what's really interesting here is we've got a map. You will have seen the data there. It's, it's coming and going as I move it around because uh, it keeps needing to reload. But again, we can zoom in um, and look at this data in a bit more detail. Um, the dots on this map are color coded by how many records are there. So we can see that here we've got over 3000 records here. So it might be that somebody is recording quite heavily in their garden there. But if I click on this, um, occurrence record in Harrow Re Re Recreation Ground. Oh, if I click on the dot, I can then see how many records there are and I can click to view a list of the records. And clicking on that will bring up that records um, list screen that we saw earlier when I was looking at species. And so I'll just quickly bring that up and we can see what's being recorded there. So yeah, we've got um, four records of hedgehogs that were put on the big hedgehog map. Okay, the final, third and final way of searching for data that I want to show you today is to search by the data set or the data provider. So if we go to search for a data partner, what that will do is bring a list of the UK with all of these data providers mapped. So if we look at lists, because not all data providers have a physical location, we've got a full list of the organisations and the groups that have submitted data to the MBN. And we can have a look at the data that they've specifically sent in. So I'm gonna have a look at the Highland Biological Recording Group um, up, in, up in the north of Scotland. And here this brings up a page with a li little bit more information about the group. Um, and then the resources here list the data sets that they've submitted. So scrolling down, we can see they've got 10 data sets, which is an impressive total of over 261,000 records and all of their 
data that they've provided has been through some kind of verification system. And then by clicking on any individual um, data set title here, so for example, their insects data set, it will bring us up, it will bring up the page for that data set, which again has a bit more information. It tells us about the data quality, about the usage rights, etc. So that was a whistle stop tour of three of the features that can be used to look up data. Uh, one last thing I'm just going to mention is that under get involved, you have got an option here to sign up to the newsletter. Now, I strongly recommend signing up to the MBN newsletter because there's always loads of really interesting information there about how to get further involved in biological recording and how biological records are being used for a wide range of different purposes. Um, if you'd like to get more into using the MBN Atlas, what I recommend is that you have a look at the help feature and uh, explore the About MBN Atlas page to learn a bit more about that.